did you find that thing you were looking for? You know, that thing that you needed so that you could finish that project that you're working on for your business so that you can launch that new product or launch that new service. Hi y'all, thanks so much for joining me. In less than 15 minutes, I'll be sharing with you three strategies that you can use so that you can improve your organizational system and stop wasting time spent and looking for things, you know, that you probably missed this because you don't have the most appropriate organizational style. So like and share this video if you get value from it. And we are live on Facebook and on Instagram. It looks like, yep, we are good to go. So I'm Dr. P. And I'm a strategic business coach and I've been a school psychologist for about 10 years in K-12 schools in the U.S. on both the East and the West Coast. And I've had amazing opportunities to serve on professional organization committees and also as part-time professors for online graduates psychology programs. I love what I do. I love coaching, teaching, mentoring, consulting. I love those things. And I'm bringing that information, that experience with you guys so that you can also improve in your businesses. Because let me tell you, in order for me to have accomplished all of those things, I really needed to have a good organizational system. Don't get me wrong. There's so many things I've tried over the years. Some have worked really good and some I was like, no, I need to abandon that. But again, it's trial and error. But one thing I know for a fact from what I've experienced in my professional career is this. If you don't have a good organizational system, you end up becoming so burnt out and so frustrated, right? Because if you can't find what you're looking for, then you're not going to be able to do the thing that you wanted to do, you know? So how many times, come on, raise your hand. How many times have you actually been looking for something, looking for that file that you know that you had, you know, something that you downloaded and you can't remember where you downloaded it, a file that you were working on in Word or something working on in Excel or in PowerPoint or even something you saved in Google Docs or Google Sheets. Oh, not to mention you have OneDrive as well and Dropbox. So you have all these different places where you save things, right? And if you are one of those, have to hold it in your hand. How many times have you printed something? And you're like, yeah, I'm printing this because I need this and I got to use it for that task that I want to accomplish. You know, when I'm doing my social media marketing, oh, that's a great thing I want to use. Saw this strategy on Pinterest. I downloaded this thing that I'm going to be using. Read this article on Forbes or on Entrepreneur on any platform and you downloaded it because you're like, yeah, this is something that's great. I'm going to need this for the future. And then future comes and you can't find that thing, that thing that you printed, that thing that you downloaded. Because you probably, more than likely, don't have a good organizational system. And if your thing is just, oh, let me download, and if you're one of these people, put everything on your desktop, how is that working out for you? You know, one of those people that have their entire desktop covered in all these icons for all of these different things that they've downloaded, if you're one of those people, how good is that working out for you? You know, and especially if you don't even have it in alphabetical order or anything, they're just on there. How are you finding those information? You know, or if you sign up for all these different things that you thought were going to be helping you in your business, but you have no way of tracking my favorite, your username and or your password. So how are you staying organized? Because then you end up wasting so much time trying to find the thing to help you to even get started that by the time an hour or two hours have passed and you haven't even started working on that one thing you wanted to be working on. And let's be honest, being an entrepreneur, there are tons of things that you have to be doing in your business. And that's not even exaggerating. There is because you are building a business, you're building a company, you're building an organization and you left an organization or you left a company that had all of those things set up, right? They had everything set up. They had the human resources, they had the budgeting, they had supplies, they knew the product, they knew the services. They had all of those things, you know, the IT, we all got to remember IT and the marketing. They had all of those things. Now you as an entrepreneur, you're looking to do those things for your business. So there's no shortage of things that you need to be working on in your business. So trust me, I get it. I'm in the same boat with you with all those things you have to be doing. So I can definitely relate. But here's the thing, though. There are only so many hours in the day. Right? There's only so much that you can get done. And your business isn't the only thing you have to do in your life. You still have a personal life, right? So this is why having a good organizational system helps you out so much because 
you are going to be able to get better at, you remember, ever heard of that word life balance? You're going to get better at doing that work life balance. Hi. <laughs> um, get better at that work life balance because you are going to improve your organizational system. And when you improve it, then you feel better about what you're getting accomplished on a day to day basis. Because again, so many things that you have to be doing. And there's some things that are those tiny little things, you know, that you have to do in your business, but not necessarily are going to make those big jumps in your business. Do you really want to be spending your time on those little tasks? Or do you want to be spending your time on doing the tasks that are most meaningful for your business? Because you know that core of why you even got your business started, that reason for why you started your business that's where you want to be spending your time. Those things that can help you achieve those goals so that you can structure your business so that you can become one of those entrepreneurs who survive past their five years and even make it to 10 years and beyond. So that's why having that organizational system really does come in handy for you. And like I mentioned before, it helps you to reduce those feelings of feeling so overwhelmed, feeling so frustrated and getting burnt out. Because you don't want to get burnt out building the business that you dreamt about having. This is a business you want to leave behind as a legacy. You don't want to begin burnt out. And trust me, without having a good organizational system, you are probably on your path to getting overwhelmed and getting frustrated and getting burnt out. That's why I really want to share three tips with you to help you get started to really improve your organizational structure. And these are things that I'm not just sharing because, oh my God, I thought these were good tips. These are things that I'm sharing because I actually have used them and I still use them and I benefit from them because I've been asked, how do I get all the things I get done done, right? And I shared is because of a good organizational system. That's what helps me out. You know, I've been coaching um, a young lady who she actually reached out to me and this isn't really my main focus for my coaching business, but she's doing a dissertation and she asked me to coach her on it, right? And in the whole process, she had asked me, how do you get all these things done? How did you get all these things done? Because when I did my dissertation, I was working full time, um, 40, maybe even 50 hours while still doing my dissertation. And I also moved between states too. So she was just curious as to how I got it all done. And I said to her, having a good organizational system, that's what worked for me. That's what got me to even get through it all. And granted, there are some other things involved in there, like having a good support system as well, but the organizational system was me. Those are the actions that I needed to be taking so that I can move forward, not just in my business um, in terms of working full time, but also in completing my dissertation. And I'm taking those strategies and I'm implementing them with being an entrepreneur did the same strategies as a school psychologist they were successful for me so that's why I'm going to continue to use them and that's why I want to share them with you because I benefit from them and I'm all about sharing information with others so that you too can benefit from it and you can move further along in your journey towards your success so those three things that I want to share here's the first one know where to find things yeah I know that sounds a little simple but here's the thing, I've found that a lot of people don't necessarily know where to find things. And yes, it could be holding in your hand paper things or digitally. It doesn't matter which one is your preference, but you have to know where to find things. If you can't find things quickly, then what do you do? You end up spending, well really wasting time looking for the thing that you needed so that you could be working on the task that you set out to be working on. So that's why you really need to know where to find things. So like I mentioned, in coaching this young lady with the dissertation, I shared with her, there are going to be so many files that you're going to have. So many times you're going to have to revise different things. Guess what? In a business, same thing. You're work, working on your business plan. You're working on your strategic plan. You're working on those goals. You have a new idea for a service or for a product. And you're going to have multiple revisions of the same thing. Whether you're printing it out and editing it or you are saving files, you have to come up with a system that works for you. Are you saving to your computer? Are you saving to the cloud? And if you're saving to the cloud, which cloud are you saving to? Are you saving to your iCloud? Are you saving to Dropbox? Are you saving to Google Docs? Are you saving to OneDrive? 
are you saving all over everything? Hey, Denise. <laughs> Thanks so much for your support. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Denise, you get it. So having an idea of where to find things. Yeah, Denise said it. It's simple, but it, it works. Because if you have five file cabinets and you're utilizing all five, but you don't know which is going into which file cabinet, then how beneficial is that going to be? You're going to waste time trying to find just one thing. Like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video, the person who has their desktop covered in icons because that's where they save everything. If you're saving everything to your desktop, how are you really finding things? So figuring out your folder system, how are you going to name your files? Because that's another big one too because we have this tendency to change the way how we name things. And guess what? When you have to find something in a crunch, you have to remember that crazy way that you came up with naming a file. So having a set way of how you name your files is going to help you out because in your business, there are so many things you have to be working on. So if you're working on five different products, you might want to include the product name in the title of your file or even in your folder. So regardless if you're doing paper based or if you're doing digital, you need to know how you're going to be saving things, therefore how you're going to be able to find things. So that way you're not wasting time trying to find files, right? So another thing is your calendar and your planner. That's another thing, right? Having a calendar and planner that you use though. I am not talking about going and finding some colorful planner and be like, oh, look at my planner. This is so cute and all these different images and then you never use it, right? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a calendar and a planner that you actually utilize. There are so many different ones out there on your phone. you got so many different ones you can access. There are tons of apps out there. There is also the paper base. You know, you could go back old school and have your paper, you know, and you could write out in your book how you want, you know, your day to look. But the point is, you have to have a way of scheduling out the tasks that you need to accomplish in your day. You have to. So that way you can look at what you need to accomplish. If you don't, you're going to run the risk of keep adding on and adding on and adding on things to your day, especially if you start your day with reading your email, then you're reading one email that's going to lead you to completing another task that's going to make you go check out some website that's going to lead to you posting on something and then you keep going and going and going, but you're spending your day just checking email and responding to email and putting out little small fires, but you're not being effective and efficient in your day because the things that you set out to do that day, you hadn't even worked on because what you got caught up on whatever you saw in the email and you decided, hey, let me keep following that. So then at the end of the week, when you look back at the progress you made for your business, what progress did you make? Responding to email? Okay, don't get me wrong. Responding to email is beneficial but is responding to the email connected to the goal you had for that month? Is responding to that email part of the discussion you're having for brainstorming for the tasks, the action, the strategies for the goal that you have? Notice I'm keep repeating the goal that you have for your business because whatever you're doing should be tied to your goals. That's what your action should be tied towards. So if you find yourself going down some rabbit hole on social media or even in your email, um, it's not being beneficial and working towards your goal, then why are you working towards it? So that's where you can use a calendar, you can use the planner. <laughs> oh my gosh, Denise. <laughs> yes, the emails are definitely small fires. They really are. And you can end up spending three hours on email and then you go, oh my God, why on earth did I spend three email, three hours on just email? And some people think it's ridiculous, but you can't spend three hours just going through email. I'm so glad you joined to Denise. I'm glad this is also helping you. So one of the things I set up to do, because I practice what I preach, so I actually went and I found a timer extension on Google. And I was curious as to how long I was spending doing certain tasks. In my head, I was thinking, okay, this takes me like two hours. And I was kind of okay with the time, but then there were some other tasks, especially when you take on a new skill that you're not sure how long it's going to take you, right? So I found a, an extension on Google that allowed me to time how long I was spending on a task, right? And I did that for an entire day. For every task, I had a new timer 
going. And it was great for me to see where I spent majority of my time for the day. And it was a Google extension. Helped me out tremendously. So that's an, one thing you can do if you're not quite sure how to really gauge how much time you're spending on different tasks. And I use it and I find it to be extremely helpful. The third one that I wanted to share with you, a third tip, is share the load. You do not have to do everything yourself. Yes, you feel like you do, especially being an entrepreneur, you feel like you do because you have to, it's your business, so you, it's your baby, it's your thing that you're taking care of and nobody else can do it. But guess what? If you take on everything yourself, you're gonna burn out, you're gonna become so frustrated, and that thing that you love that you started, you're gonna not do it, right? Because you're gonna be tired of it. So you have to share the load, delegate tasks to people that can do those tasks so you can focus on the things that you truly need to focus on. And when you're looking at building a team and you're delegating tasks to that, those team members, make sure that you're finding team members that have skills that you don't have so that they can actually apply those skills to those tasks you need them to be doing. That's the whole purpose of having that team, you know, growing a team that can support each other and help move towards your vision and your mission for your business. But we all, we all have to remember to share the load. Get people on board with you who can help you so you do not have to do everything yourself. And remember, your team members have skill sets that you don't have. So rely on your team members so that you can keep moving forward and not feel frustrated. So there are tons of other strategies out there that you can use to help improve your organizational system, your organizational style. But I just really wanted to share these three because these are three that, like I said, I use them and I find them to be very helpful and I've used them over 10 years and they've helped me out tremendously. Really hope that they help you guys out as well. So message me if you want to get more information. Remember, solutions plus actions equals results. Thank you all so much for joining me. Until next time, bye y'all.